In this video, we're going to take a look at some improvements to the Xcode console, particularly related to logging. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below for that YouTube algorithm. Let's open up Xcode 15 beta, and I'm going to jump into an existing project. Now, it's not really relevant what this project is. We're just going to take a look at what is new in this bottom panel here. Let me just open it up with a command shift Y. Alrighty, just like that. So familiar looking console here. Now let's take a stab at logging. So this project has a API client. So we're just going to jump into that. I have called it a uh, RM service. This is the Rick and Morty project if you're unfamiliar. And the service basically responsible for making API requests. So nothing too fancy going on. So in the world of logging, a lot of folks already are familiar with OS log, which you can use for structured logging, you know, info messages, warnings, errors, and the like. A lot of folks also use print statements, which is not really meant to be used for logging, that's standard output. So let's take a look at some logging techniques. So here we have a function that can execute a API request. And what I want to do inside of here is I'm just going to add a print statement and we are going to say starting request. And what I will toss in here is basically the requests URL. So we'll say request.url and we're going to do dot absolute string. Otherwise, we'll just coalesce to a empty uh, string with a dash. So let's give this project a build and a run. And we should see our simulator pop up here momentarily. It's the 17 simulator, so just bear with it a moment. Once again, irrelevant what the actual app is, but we should see this print show up down here in a second. And we'll see the better way that we can uh, you know, achieve this logging semantic instead of using janky print statements as soon as my simulator decides to cooperate here. So all right, so we see this down here. And actually up here, we already see some of the new structured logging related output. You can see the background color of this SK payment queue is in fact different. So let's let's take a look at what the new logging stuff is and what it supports. I'm just going to run through the tabs here so we have a few more API calls that are triggered. So instead of using this print statement, we're going to use OS log and the console now has first class support for this, but we will start by importing OS log and OS log allows you to create loggers and log structured messages for debugging purposes. So let's create a logger, which is going to be of type logger, and we're going to create it with a subsystem and a category. Now, these are basically just strings, a subsystem and category to help define uh, the specifics of this logger. But commonly, the subsystem is used um, as the bundle identifier, which is io.iosacademy.rickandmorty. And the category is typically the class. So in this case, we have our RM service. So we'll just call this RM service. So cool, so now that we have this logger, instead of using prints down here, what I can actually do is the following. So let me actually grab the same string in here. And I'm gonna say this is an info message. Now before I actually use it, you'll see we have info messages, we can use debug messages, error, we can also start tracing. So if you wanna trace maybe a call stack, where a call originated from, you can also use uh, notices, some critical, you can also use fault messages, and you can also specify logs with log levels. So there are quite a few options here, and the purpose of it is so you don't have to start prefixing your prints that a lot of people do, including myself, uh, with you know like maybe an emoji so you can disambiguate different log statements and it gets a little janky especially with big projects so you definitely want to be using structured logging and now that xcode 15 supports this in a much nicer way we can actually evaluate uh, and find these logs in a simpler way so let's just give this a run and let's see what we actually get in our output so we're going to build and run here i'm just going to cycle through our tabs here and we'll see we have basically a similar looking output, um, but what's particularly interesting here is we now have these separated line breaks. Um, we can click through these and we can start to do some more interesting things. So at the bottom here, there's this little uh, switch looking icon. If we click on it, we can actually say, hey, we wanna see metadata. And we also want to see the subsystem and category from which a log was produced. 
And when you check those off, you'll start to see a subtitle here that, hey, here's the category that supported it, that rather supplied it, and here is the subsystem that supplied it. So you can imagine this is helpful when you have dependencies also logging and when you have Apple themselves logging. So if you look here, um, Apple themselves is saying, hey, this came from the subsystem of StoreKit and the default category, which presumably is their you know, default class implementation. We can click this again and check off additional things to see the process ID, the library, the timestamp, um, basically all the information you would expect to see supported in the logger. So those are my friends that come from the world of uh, Android or you know other IDEs, IntelliJ, Suites, if you will, JetBrains. Um, you guys have had amazing consoles and loggers for literally years and years and years. So it's about time Xcode finally caught up here. Now let's take it one step further. So we have a bunch of logs here and we can see all these output uh, elements, but you can imagine if we have thousands of logs, one common like janky way to figure out where your log is, is basically just doing a command F and searching for it, right? And then stepping through all of the found results. Well, that's kind of annoying. The better thing you can do is use the filter down here and we can actually filter by a particular thing. So I can say, hey, I only want to see info related logs. And just like that, everything else is filtered out. We can also click this and we can filter by additional things. So let's say I want to filter by, let's see, let's filter by category. So we want to clear recent. All right, let me clear that. And these are just types, but let's type in um, what is our category here? We did io.iosacademy.rick and Morty, or subsystem, I should say. And essentially, the filter will tell us, hey, this subsystem does exist here. So if you want to filter this, either exclude it or include it, you can do so. In this case, it's excluding it. Similarly, we can also filter with a category. So if I do rm service, it will say, okay, everything including rm service, show me that here. So the short and sweet of this is that the structured logging that now gets first class support in the console slash debugger will really help you speed up your workflows, particularly for debugging. If you work in large scale apps at a big company, if you have any of your own large scale apps, it's really helpful. You should certainly be using uh, you know, the appropriate logger object here through OS log instead of prints everywhere, which I know every single iOS developer is guilty of doing. So that is all I've got for you guys in this video. Xcode 15 is a lot of new stuff that I plan to go through, including bookmarks, better code completes, and a whole host of new features. So if you're into that and into iOS, hit that subscribe button below, hit that like button as well while you're at it. Let me know in the comments what other cool WWDC 23 stuff you are excited for. Appreciate y'all watching and I will see y'all in the next video.